Hello, guys. We're going to get into the live podcast in just a second. Just a tiny little disclaimer. Um, we did have a couple of issues with the feedback uh, through the monitors on the day. You are going to hear a little bit of feedback and a tiny bit of humming. It does get better as the episode uh, carries on, though. So maybe the first 10 minutes or so, there's a bit of feedback that pops up every now and then. Uh, it does get better towards the end, I promise. Hopefully that doesn't spoil it for you. Um, we didn't really have much or too much control of that over the day. Um, yeah, the area we set up in was a little bit compact, not complaining about it at all. Um, brilliant day, brilliant setup. Thank you to Bonehead and Anthony and everybody. So, um, But yeah, we did have a little bit of feedback because the mics were fairly close uh, to the monitors. Also... One of the cameras in the video, if you are watching the video instead of audio, did go out of focus a little bit. Um, and yeah, we were a little bit restricted with the angles that we could film at. So look, I'm a perfectionist. I think, look, realistically, it turned out really, really well. Um, I'm happy with the video. I'm happy with how it sounds. And it was a fantastic day. Thank you to everyone who came along uh, and was part of it. But um, yeah, just a tiny disclaimer that there's a bit of feedback through the first 10 or so minutes uh, and it pops up every now and then in the episode. And uh, one of the cameras did go out of focus um, and some of the angles were a little bit restricted because we didn't have much space to work in. But hey, look... Free content, guys. Soak it up. This is one of the best things I've ever done in my entire life, if not the best. Uh, thank you to Charlie Combin, uh, the Close to a Flag boys, and of course Marnie for doing it. So that's enough from me. Let's get straight into it. Please ignore those tiny little things I'm talking about. And um, for anyone who couldn't be there, I really, really hope you enjoy it. So enough from me. Let's get straight into it. Hello, everybody. Can everyone hear us? All good? Fantastic. I kind of want to listen to that one more time, but we've got to start the pod. Sorry, guys. If it ever feeds back or anything, if you need the sound up, yell at us. Uh, it's very, very casual. I've got no idea what I'm doing, to be honest with you guys. So first of all, thank you very much for all coming to the Further North Live podcast. You're all fantastic. I can't believe this many people want to turn up on a Sunday, have some drinks and listen to me speak about North Melbourne. But uh, give yourselves a massive round of applause. Thank you, guys. So a couple of little bits of housekeeping. Firstly, I'll thank Bonehead Brewing. Thank you, Anthony, who runs the place, for giving me the venue today. Fantastic drinks. So please come up and grab as many as you can. There's no limit here, so you'll be fine, okay? Um, if there's any free stools as well, please let people know for those who are standing. If there's any free ones, pass them out to people and let's all be friends, guys. <laughs> all right. Fantastic. So, we've got a very special guest. He's sitting right next to me. This is the future All-Australian fullback, Charlie Combin. Please say hello to him. <laughs> excited, Tom. How are you feeling? Nah, really excited. And thanks for having me, Josh. Um, Easy, thanks, mate. everyone, for coming as well. Really good turnout. You guys ever heard of Marnie Cohen before? Have you seen her before? Hi. Our yeah. family is here for her, by the way. <laughs> She's the reason we're all here, to be honest. You're the real star, Marnie. Um, and these three guys at the end, a uh, little Facebook page called North Melbourne Close to a Flag. Very funny stuff. Say hello to them. Thank you, Marnie's family. <laughs> that is fine. You're not sitting in admin order, which is really confusing me right now. No, so admin three, admin one, admin two. Is that, that right? Yeah, well, yeah, well done. At least you could sit in admin order, guys. Come on. So a little bit of a run sheet, guys. We've got a few things to do today. There's going to be prizes. Uh, we're going to do fan questions and that sort of stuff. So if anyone has questions for any of us, obviously Chom's here, ask him whatever. Um, very touchy stuff. No Taryn questions. Let's just get that out of the way right now. Um, other than that, everything is on the table and you can ask us all whatever you like, okay? We're going to play some games. Uh, we've got, I mean, this is massive. We've got a Jamie McMillan signed Guernsey to give away and it doesn't get much bigger than that, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust me, it's massive. But <laughs> let's kick it off. All right, we're going to get to know uh, we're going to get to know Chom as well. So we've got a couple of questions for him. Uh, we're going to break down his life. We're going to get inside his psyche, and we're all going to get a little bit closer to our fan favourite. Okay, let's kick this off. So uh, Chom, who'd you support as a kid, mate? Oh, I was a St Kilda supporter growing up. Oof. Oy. Yeah. Uh, Nick Rail was actually a massive favourite of mine. Still is. Love the way you played. I've always played forward until recently, mm. so um, yeah, I used to idolise Nick growing up. Okay, unbelievable. Money, your question. What is your favourite sport outside of footy? Big cricket nuffy. Um, Ooh. 
just catch me down the net. I live in Mooney Pond, so um, we're always down at the nets, cricket nets, me and my housemates. Um, I live with a good mate from back home, and then um, Tommy Powell as well, and we head down the cricket nets and play a fair bit of cricket. So okay. massive love for cricket. Bat, bowl, what do you do? Um, yeah, a, a bat. I know I should probably bowl because I'm tall enough, but <laughs> I was never good. What was your bowl, spin? Yeah, a little off his. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What do you guys got for him? Love that, mate. Um, we've got here, so you know you're pretty vocal pre-season. With this Let's just move the mics further this away from the speakers as well if we can. Good form. Um, we know you're pretty vocal about this pre-season. Um, what do you weigh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I found that ridiculous. I, um, I did cop a fair bit for that as well, but um, thick skin, thick skin. I'm, I'm 96 at the moment. <laughs> Lovely. So you're from Sale, is that right? Yeah, I'm a Sale boy. I've done a little bit of research. Do you think you're the most famous person from Sale? <laughs> oh, I'd probably hear it would be. Scotty Penderbury might have me covered, but Interesting. I'll catch you, I didn't know Scotty Penderbury. The only other famous person from Sale that I could find was Will Anderson, like the comedian. Yeah, actually, that's but a I big reckon name. If, that is a big name. Say Pendles is there. I reckon you're top three. Yeah, well, <laughs> there's probably no one else coming from <laughs> Sale. <laughs> yeah. it's a bit what of a, a list. Shit old sale. What yeah. a list. Unbelievable. All right. So every preseason, we know there's always someone training the house down. <laughs> uh, who has that been for us this season? Yeah, I think uh, there's been a few names thrown out. You probably heard Darcy Tucker's one of them. Come back really fit. A few cliches here. Obviously, train the house down, um, run on top of the ground. Um, Charles Zara is another one. He um, he was admin of playing playing midfield last year. He didn't really get a crack until the end of the year. Um, and yeah, to his credit, he's he's put her in a really good performance this preseason, and looks a likely uh, round one starter. So that's that's big for Laz. Um, the other one's Cal Dawson, and obviously mm. in the past we've had a um, bit of a hold down back with our keys. Um, and yeah, a few injuries to obviously me and Aiden to start this preseason. Cal's really been the one to step up and and be vocal and kind of take control down there of that back line with um, Big and Pinky at the moment. So Cal's been really really solid. Um, so you should have a really, really good year down there. Is, uh, is Bull's rig as good in person as it looks on the photos? <laughs> I think there's a, that's been pumped up a fair bit, Bull's rig. So, so you're saying not as good as... The, you reckon there's a bit of air, airbrushing there or something? Oh, he's in good nick, but like, <laughs> he was in good nick last year as well. There's um, right. a lot of talk about him coming back in career best, but yeah, it's, um, it's definitely been photoshopped if that's what you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. What do you guys got? Um, so we've all unanimously agreed the answer is Paul Curtis here, but um, who do you think is the most handsome North Melbourne player? <laughs> yeah, Paulie, Paulie would love you saying that. Um, Aldi U would have to be up there for mine. Um, Jai with his striking jawline. But, um, he's handsome, Jai. I tell you what, from this season I saw some footage, I'm like, I reckon he's the most handsome. Yeah, Jai, Jai is, but he, he, throws, he throws himself off a bit with how much he loves himself, so... I'll lock in LDU for that. PC would love that, though. I'll let him know, eh? Yeah, please, please let us know. Unbelievable. So as a kid, everyone wants to kick bags of goals. Everyone wants to play in the forward line. Who told you you're going down back and how'd you take that? Yeah, Clark has sat me down at the end of last year. Um, would have been around June, July. Uh, didn't look like I was going to get back out there for the year. Um, I remember going up into his office, sat me down, said, mate, um, we love you up forward, but really feel like you can um, use your strengths down back, which mm. essentially was his same to me. You, you, you can't kick goals, you can't kick straight. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I took that on board. And then we started going the footy. So um, I went to about three or four games with, with Clark at the end of the year, mostly watching Darcy Moore. I went to a Melbourne game um, to watch Lever and Stephen May. Okay. Um, That's really interesting, actually. I didn't know you'd go to games and watch other players. Yeah, so Clark was doing that a fair bit at the end of the year. Um, yeah, okay. Especially when he had his time off um, during the year. He went away and just watched, watched a lot of footage, um, watched a lot of the games and really studied the game. Um, and then, yeah, come back and try to impart that on, on a few players he'd, he'd take to games. But even just sitting there and watching with mm. Clark, he's pretty, pretty special. He's got such a good footy brain. Unreal. Um, and to tell me I was doing that maybe 10 years ago, I wouldn't believe How'd it. How'd you so. take it, though? Were you, were you a bit cut inside? <laughs> Deep down a little bit. <laughs> no, nah, it's actually... In all seriousness, um, I've only played seven quarters down there so far, but I'm mm. really, really enjoying it. Um, yeah. It's a different feel. You see the game a lot more rather than the game coming at you. Mm. It'll probably help me um, not break any bones this year, hopefully. So. <laughs> Let's hope, mate. Let's hope. So sticking with man who's training the house down in Cam Zerha, everyone is familiar with Bulls cooking. Um, hopefully he can be as good on field this year as he is off the field in the kitchen. Uh, do you ever get invited to his place for dinner? And what is the best and worst thing that he's ever cooked for you? Yeah, best and worst. Yeah, I've been for a few feasibles. Um, 
He's got a bit of a rotation. He gets a fair few of the lads around. He um oh, he put on put on a feed maybe four months ago now, and I went with Griff Logue, um, and he had three different selections of steaks, um, and each were dry aged at different different period of time. And he put this one, I think it was like a 90 day or 120 day, something ridiculous that he'd got from his his butcher specialist, and fuck, it was rotten. It tastes like <laughs> shit. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I sat there, shut up, and said, yeah, Bull, this is really good, mate. Like, it's lovely. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, nah, he's, he's a brilliant cook. He um really good, really good cook in mind, and he, he spends a lot of time in there, and he puts on feeds the boys, too, at, at, at his own cost. So Can you get us on the Bull. roster? <laughs> How do we get tell, an invite yeah, to tell this? Tell him you've got five mates you want to bring around next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll try, Marnie, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> that means no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, yeah, so... Um, as uh, some people may know if I were the page, we run a little-known bay at Marble Stadium called Bay 29. Now, we shouted a few Kanga Kanga Kangas ourselves. Now, I'm, I need some straps also. If anyone has any, please. Um, but would you be able to give us a Kanga 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 after a win over the fence? <laughs> Come to the bay and do it with us, mate. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yes, that's what we want. I'll do it. Yes, that that's that's we want. Record. Lovely. you got to steer into the skid. Everybody's going to get down to Bay 29 as well, Absolutely. Uh, here's a good one. Team you most want to beat this season? Uh, well, I think Essendon's the easy pick there. Um, mm. Obviously, like, it's a massive fan rivalry, but a lot of the boys don't really like the Essendon group that, that, that much either. But that's what we like to hear. That's the easy, that's the easy answer, isn't it? But, um, yeah, Port Adelaide, I suppose, is probably one of our newer rivalries as well. So that's probably another one. <laughs> yeah, morning. we know what Zerha did last year, guys, and we're going we're gonna to see it again. Don't worry about that. At the end of last season, you went over to Europe um, with a few of the boys. Um, what was your What was your favourite country that you went to, and who was the loosest on the Euro trip that wasn't my dad? <laughs> yeah, well, I um I went with Jackson Archer and Paul Curse, two of my really close mates at the club, and um the boys those boys are a little bit younger than me, and I probably appreciate the finer things in life a bit more than Paul and, and Arch. I don't think there's too much between the head for those boys, so they'll. They were pretty happy just to go over there and drink heaps of piss. Um, <laughs> but I really enjoyed Rome. Um, I love the old city. I love just walking around and, like, um, immersing myself in the culture there. Um, those boys liked uh, Germany a bit more for Oktoberfest, so PC had a fair dip as well. I did Oktoberfest twice, and it's literally the best thing I've ever done in my entire so life. So fun, eh? I think there's a certain man in the crowd right now who knows what I'm talking about, but I think he consumed about eight litres of beer. I'm talking to you, Nigel. <laughs> He consumed eight litres of beer and still was standing at the end of the night. The man's a machine. It's impressive. <laughs> Unreal. And uh, naturally, going to the back line, you're playing against some new players. Who do you reckon is the forward you're least excited to play on? Fair few of them. We were sitting at the dinner table the other night and, um, yeah, usually, like, well, I haven't experienced it yet, but usually I'd be really excited coming into a game. You don't really think of who you're playing on too much in terms of defenders. It's more all about you as a forward. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll listen off some of the names and like blokes like Tom Hawkins, Tex Walker, Max King, Kerno. Um, so pretty, pretty daunting. Um, You'll be fine, mate. You'll be fine. Yeah, I, I will. I'll put a knee through the head. <laughs> but, um, Tomahawk probably, I reckon. He's a big boy, really experienced. It's the older boys with lots of um, Ford Noose and Ford Craft that are probably the ones that are um, most discerning. But yeah, probably Tommy Hawkins, I reckon. So you touched on it a little bit before. I know Nicky Rewalt, but who's your other, any other favourite players as a kid besides uh, him? Robert Harvey was another one. Lenny Hayes. Mostly St Kilda players, really. It's all right, mate. It's yeah. all right. I know, sorry. It's fine. Who's your favourite North player of all time? Probably Nick Larkey. Yeah. yeah, good choice. Love Nick. Yeah, good choice. <laughs> Josh stole my question. So, boys? Oh, did I? Yeah. Whoops. It's all right. It happens too often. <laughs> Well, uh, that feels uh, targeted. Yeah. Um, so we've um, noticed as well you've been dabbling in a bit of photography as well lately. Um, goes by Chomflix. Tell us about that. Yeah, I started getting into film photography probably the last like six months. Um, I've always liked uh, like analog kind of things, like I collect vinyl. Um, film photography is a new one. I um, I journal each night with a pen and ink, like just weird little quirks like that. I like like analog. I like, like having things rather than like listening to digital um, versions of it. So. Yeah, going to film, um, I bought a, a little Canon point and shoot, and that was my first camera. And it's just been good, like, hanging out with a few mates, might be having a few beers to actually, like, document that and, and take photos. Um, especially as, like, boys, you find a lot. We don't really take photos of stuff we're doing, and we have all these great memories that we don't look back on. So that's been the main thing. Like, we'll go away on a trip, I'll take the cameras, and 
and the boys will take photos of us as well. So um, it's been really, really enjoyable. But even like learning about photography too has been interesting. Um, Maddie Green comes down the train and takes a lot of photos for us. She's she's wonderful and beautiful person as well. She's been really, um, really helpful with, with giving me some pointers in photography as well. So we'll give Maddie a shout out. Unreal. At Chum Flicks, right? Yeah, at Chum Flicks. Everybody, at Chum Flicks Instagram, get on board. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little bit of a season preview. So we've got a bunch of questions we're just going to go through. If anyone's got any other answers, yell them out, heckle us. That's also okay. Get involved. Um, but basically, we're going to go through things like, yeah, player of the season, B and F, all that sort of stuff. So we're going to kick it off with our player of the season. Who do I think is going to be the player of the season? Early on, give me Colby McKercher. I love what I'm seeing from him. It looks like he's played for about four years already. He's unbelievable. I'm so on board. I'm so on board. Anyone else? Who do you, who you guys reckon is going to be player of the season? We as a collective went for Bailey Scott. We think he's always one of, most, un one of the most underrated players in the complex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we think this is his year. Okay. Yeah. I've gone George Wardlaw. Oh, I love if George. If preseason forms enough to get Kane Corns excited, then I think the rest <laughs> of us should be excited as well. Can the club see who's got memberships? Do they know if Kane's got his yet? Is that a thing? I told him that if he got a membership, then he has to come with me to a game. Oh, that would be wild. Do you need to explain a bit of the context around your weird relationship with Kane Corns? <laughs> Kane Corns and I go back um, quite a few years in 2018. He used to message me every Sunday morning for content for the Sunday footy show. Um, and so I do have a, a soft spot for good old uh, Cornsy. So who knows? Maybe this year I'll get him up uh, down on the to the North game. Get him on the pod. Oh, God. Pressure's on. All well, right, we'll see what we can do. I love Kane as well, Marnie. He, um, he agrees in the player weights with me. So um, he's, he's, I'm a big fan of his. <laughs> You're one from one with Kane Corns. <laughs> Get on the right foot early. <laughs> Tip player of the season, Chum, who's it going to be besides yourself, obviously? Um, might be a little bit biased because I do live with him, but Tommy Powell has come back mm. in, in great Nick, the cliches again, but come back in brilliant Nick. But um, his game his game awareness and game vision is honestly like nothing I've ever seen. Yeah, well. Playing a bit of a new role in midfield this year um, as more of a defensive mid, um, so he'll patrol the corridor of the ground quite a lot. Um, yes. Similar to kind of how Scott Pendlebury um, plays his footy, so... Yeah, I reckon Tommy could have a bit of a breakout year this year. Unreal. All right, this is going to be difficult. I've got BNF, but not LDU. We need to pick someone else. Who's it going to be? Let's start back here. We didn't talk for long about this. It was Sheasel. Um, we love him just as much as everyone else. So. Sheasel back to back. Yeah, slam dunk for Sheasel. Okay. Marnie, who you got? I've got Nick Larky. Nick Larky. I think after the year he had last year, it's only going to get better this year. So I'd pencil him in for the BNF. Tip it, John. Yeah, I like Silver as well. Yeah. Silver as well? Yeah. Oh, my gut's telling me George. I love George Wardlaw so much. I think George is going to take it out. Yeah. Do you guys think George can do it? You reckon? Like, I don't I know. Out, like, out of, out of all of these, who, who, do we, who do we have? We had Sheasel, Larky, Larky. George. Who thinks Sheasel? Yeah. yeah. Larky? Good response. George? Oh, come oh, on. So <laughs> come on. That's a win to Nick, That's right, a isn't stitch it? up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nick wins that. <laughs> Uh, all right, most goals, but not Sylv. Uh, well, we'll take it away. Uh, we, we love Slevo, Stevo on the page. Mm. So we think he's going to do amazing things this year. We're very excited. Okay, Marnie? Hugh Greenwood. Oh. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Jasper Pittard for BNF as well. You never know. Stranger things have happened. Hey, yep. things have happened. Yeah, yeah, mid-season draft, you never know. Yeah, I, um, I like Paul Curtis, but um, I think it's going to be hard to go past Bull as well. Um, mm. Experience there. But, yeah, one of, one of Bull and Paul Curtis. If I was to pick one, I'll take Bull and a uh, close, um, close little third uh, PC. Okay. Yeah, mine was going to be Paul Curtis. So you can, you can take Zerha. I, I reckon PC is in for a massive year. The dude looks like a tank. And off, uh, off one game, I'm so sold on him against Collingwood. If you can do he's that against not, the reigning uh, premiers, he's, he's going to be great. Hugh Greenwood, though. Yeah, well, we know what you think about Hugh Greenwood, Marnie. Light of my life. Did you want to have a moment and just let everyone know about Hugh Greenwood? Do you want to talk about your top five Hugh Greenwood moments or something? Another time. We'll save it for another pod. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole pod in itself. Most improved. Who do we think is going to be most improved? Uh, most improved, we've gone for Charlie Lazaro. Um, yeah, yeah. Been looking pretty decent and in the game against Collingwood looked all right. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot to like about him and I think he's really only just getting started. All right. Uh, for those who have listened to the pod already this year, you guys know how I feel about the return of Darcy Tucker. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Tucker Watch is well and truly on for 2024, so I've got him for my most improved. All right. I like Tuck. Um, mine's still Stevens. Uh, he's played obviously 40, 45 games for, for Sydney. Um, 
been relatively good there, but he's got a very high ceiling. He was one of the best players in my draft pool in 2019. Um, I don't feel he's really reached that yet, so hopefully a new club can reinvigorate him and um, he can have a good year. Okay. No bias intended. I'm, I'm definitely saying you. I, I genuinely, like, you, what did you play, nine games last year or something? Yeah, seven. I, I reckon eight, 18 plus games and uh, all Australian 40, let's call that. All Australian 40. It's on the cards, right? It's big call, mate, but thanks. No pressure, uh, no pressure, no pressure. Other than that, uh, Callan Dawson as well. I think he's, he's looked pretty good. Uh, I, I rate Callan. There's going to be opportunities in the back line. So, Callan Dawson, who knows? I reckon he could do it. Surprise All-Australian. Um, I just gave mine away, didn't I? Yeah. Oopsie. <laughs> well, uh, we're going for our player of the season selection, so we're going to go for Bailey Scott. Um, yeah, massive. With the amount of ball he was getting last year, if he can build on that, I really don't see why he couldn't at least be on the short list, if not and maybe even a surprise with the final 22. Watch out. Errol Gorlin, we're coming for you. I also said Bailey Scott, um, but I'd probably throw LDU in the mix as well, but I don't think that would really be much of a surprise. No surprise. Uh, he's a superstar, so hopefully we can get a full season out of him and find him in the All-Australian side at the end of the year. All right. What do you reckon, Chum? Uh, I reckon George can, if he plays a full year. Mm. Um, injuries aside, he obviously really excited last year. Consistency will be, will be key for All-Australian, but if George plays a full year, honestly, could be anything. Mm. I kind of think Paul Curtis again. I just think he's going to have a massive year. I'm so on the Paul Curtis train, it's not even funny, you know. I reckon 45-plus goals and give him the All-Australian. Why not? I do have one more. Oh, one more. Yeah, Hugh Greenwood? Aiden Core. Oh. Go on, tell us. Surely. He's going to be able to... He's got to guide the other All-Australian oh. defender. We've got a one-two punch going on. Yeah. Jerry in the ruck too. Oh, Helmet please. Jerry's a no. thing, guys. I'm telling you. I'm okay. telling you. Next, we draw the line. Is there a campaign within the club to glue that thing to his head? I really like it. It, um, it suits him. It makes him look like a meathead. It actually makes him look bigger, I reckon. X is yeah. a big boy. Um, Does he wear a schmedium uh, jersey or did he put it in the dryer before or something? <laughs> it is tight, isn't it? Yeah, it's tight. Oh, I love the helmet, man. I reckon it looks tough. Yeah, I, I, vibes. Yeah, I think I said on the last pod, like if Liquid Nails is ever listening to my pod, sponsor that man and glue that <laughs> thing to his head because he's playing like a weapon right now. Um, all right, here's a massive one. Last one of the season preview, ladder position. What do you guys reckon? Well, I mean, like, given it's our premiership year, like, at least third, you know. Like, top um, top four? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, OK, lock that in. Yeah, lock it in. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I can't see us losing a game this year. <laughs> Fantastic. So put us top of the table. Sean's going to say something similar. <laughs> I'd love to see us up and around the top eight. Yeah. Um, I honestly feel like we improve a lot this year, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Should I be more realistic or should I follow the trend here? <laughs> now I feel bad. realistic, mate. You are the, like, the one who is I'm the level like, head. on the negative side. I'm not negative, I'm realistic. It's a difference, all right? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, reckon, I reckon we can squeeze out of the bottom four. I reckon I was, I, was, I was on the train of like maybe in the bottom four, but after that Collingwood performance, yeah, I reckon North Ball's real. So I, uh, I reckon we can get out of the bottom four, but uh, sorry for bringing the mood down, guys. I, I really apologise. I thought everyone was going to be a little bit more realistic than that. We should have chatted before the pod, right? We don't do real. No, here. no. Supreme I invite these three blokes. I think I'm going to get level-headed answers. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Josh, we're undefeated and we just beat the reigning premiers. We are literally <laughs> the best team. We at are the, the biggest club. We are massive. In the league. You're totally right, and I and I completely blame myself for that. Are you going to put a little cheeky sports bet on top uh, top four then? Me personally, I'm not yep. a betting man myself, but um, if I were, yeah. <laughs> deflect, deflect. Well, yep. I can't either. <laughs> yeah, 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 you can't. If you do, just gamble responsibly. Oh, absolutely. Uh, all right, though, that's the bit of the season preview, but we've got, we're going to go to probably the best segment we're going to do today. I don't want to peak too early like I did in high school, but we're going to do uh, How Well Do You Know Liam Shields? Now, we were thinking before, I don't know if you guys saw us post this up earlier. Hopefully you guys can see from down there. We'll bring it around that's later brilliant. on. Do you like the Photoshop work? Oh, it's so good. That um, is brilliant. Can you frame uh, it? I'll take it home I'll, with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we'll get it laminated Cheers. or something I'll for you, mate. i spent three minutes on it, so I'm pretty proud of it. How much do you reckon we can get that for? If we sign that and auction it off, I reckon we're talking four we figures. I'm from taking both it home, Josh. Eh? Yeah, yeah, you're right. We'll get you a different copy. So basically, uh, through some very, uh, very lovely work friends of mine, we've got in touch with Liam Shields. And uh, we thought, who's the player that we reckon Chom knows the least about at the club? And we sort of thought, Liam Shields is probably that guy. So we've got some videos we're going to show you. We're going to do very, very low budget stuff right now. We're going to hold the phone into the mic and see if you guys can hear it. If you can't hear it, let us know and we'll give this another crack. Um, these guys are going to take this, going to um, ask some questions, and yeah, let's and see play what Liam says. Home if you can. Like, if you know these answers, that is cooked, but <laughs> we're, we're testing him here. So we're going to go question one on Liam Shields. 
What is his coffee order? It's a uh, small latte, um, no sugar. A small latte. Tell him, Marnie, how are we? I hope hey, this guys, good to be on the show. Always happy to uh, answer a couple of questions to stitch up Chom. Uh, don't think you'll get too many right. Uh, my f- coffee order is a strong latte. Strong latte. I've got my small and strong mixed Not up. far <laughs> off, but he's, uh, he's minimum milk, that man. He's all strength. But we move on to question two. So we're from, we'll give that half a mark, maybe? Uh, oh. we'll, 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 give it, we'll give him a point because I don't reckon we'll, he's getting any of the we'll other ones. The end. We're going to be really, really leaning on this. We were confident before, but maybe not so much it, now. We, we hope Liam's on like the match selection committee and doesn't give you a game yeah, in round one. Yeah, could be mate. detrimental. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, we have question two. When is his birthday? And bonus points if you can get the year. Uh, she's his birthday is 13th of April. Jeez, he's confident. Um, and he's an old fella. It'd be 89... 91, sorry, 93. Old? 91, I'm 91, not even 91. <laughs> it's 13th April, though, 91. You were not far off. Absolutely no chance of getting this one right, John. Uh, my birthday is the 29th of April, 1991. Um, hey! Hey! Yeah. half point, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, so he's on, he's on one from two half points. We didn't think this was possible. <laughs> no, no, no. You've already got way more than I thought you'd get. Well, month and year, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, question three might throw you, though. When he gets the aux cord in the gym, what music is he playing? Mate, I don't reckon Shields has ever had the aux cord in the gym. Um, I think strategically, he, you reckon he's he rubbish? He this, could be, this could be a trick question. Um, I think he's a bit of a Hot 100 Nova listener, like real... Um, real, real Kyle Jackie yeah, character. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah, you'd lock that in. All right, let's see. Hayden Jamesy. I normally stay well clear of the iPad and the music in the gym, um, but I would probably play some country music or some Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. Showing his close, age. Close, really close. It is close. <laughs> he was a, he was on Nova at one point. Yeah. I think, yeah. In '91. A country is making a bit of a comeback, so I, yeah, I, I kind of respect it. Out of ten, what sort of pump do you reckon you can get in the gym to uh, to Springsteen? Well, I actually like Springsteen. All right, all right. Got a few of his vinyls, but um, watch out. Yeah, big one. All right, that's it. All right, well, we're on a hot run here, so question four. Do you know where his nickname Pup originated from? I do, actually, yeah. Oh, we um, thought we'd get him with this one, too. Yeah. I thought you were no chance. So, um, Shieldsy, when he first got to Hawthorne, um, yeah, Michael Clark had just come into the test team and was making runs, and um, they reckon Shieldsy looks like Michael Clark, and obviously Michael Clark's nickname was Pup, so he got Pup. Right, well, Clarko gave me the nickname right, Pup uh, when I first got drafted because I was still 17, uh, and still at school, and also I had the tip to here, like Michael Clark was running at the same time. So, hey, yeah, round, well round of applause! Done. Round of applause for Sean. Round of applause for him. That one is a hundred percent a tick. Yeah, well absolutely. You've done actually pretty well. I was like, there's no I'm chance he gets half of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just hoping one of us is keeping score here. But question five: Do you know his golf handicap? Yeah. Um, Re- what? No way. They, he did tell us before the show that they were playing, he would know golf if golf came up. Mm. So we're very impressed here if you can right. do this. Yeah, so Pup also, you love me mentioning, he's got a hole in one the other week, which obviously everyone's seen because he plastered everywhere. He did. Um, nothing like a bit of um, self indulgence for Pup, but um, yeah, it's 13. He's, um, he's a very good golfer. All right. High budget tech. Oh, we. Let's. Golf handicap at the moment is uh, 12.1. 12.1. Oh. No, so there's conjecture here. When I played with him last year, he was 13. He must have improved after that hole in one. So, um, <laughs> what do we reckon? Can we get like a show of hands? Do we pay that Do we give not? it to him? Yeah. Pay it? Oh, it's pay looking it. like half the room. Oh, I think we'll pay that. We'll give yeah, it to him. I think we'll pay that. I think that comes out, was it three and a half? Yes, we'll go three, yeah, three yeah, and a half. A, I reckon, a yeah, I was like, there's there's no way you get any of those. Round of applause Yeah, for we'll stay well with us, Chom. knows Liam pretty well. Chom knows Liam Shields. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. If we do this again next year, we've we got to think, who else on the list would be a player that he's probably got no clue about? I think we go Liam Shields again. Yeah, Liam Shields <laughs> again, back to back. Just the, the oddly specific I'll round. I'll be studying. Yeah, I'll be doing my study. <laughs> All yeah, right. Thank you for playing. So what we're going to do now, we're going to do Roaming Marnie. Now, this is everyone's favourite segment. We're going to do a little bit of tech here. Uh, we're going to lower this mic down and see if we can carefully thread it through here down to Marnie, if you guys can handle that. Please yell at us if someone's about to trip over this cord, guys. We need as much oh and as possible right now. Yeah, just straight down there from one of the bottom ones. 
So if anyone's got any questions for any of us, obviously ask Chum about anything. Um, but if anyone's got any questions, stick your hand up and uh, heckle us, talk to us. We're gonna, uh, yeah, we're gonna do some roaming Marnie. This is the most North Melbourne setup ever, isn't it? Yeah, you look, family run club, you know. <laughs> we do a lot with a little. A similar setup for Clarko, I'd say, when he's doing match review and that sort of stuff. Yeah, we've run with this before, I reckon. <laughs> Who do you reckon would be feeding the cord down at the club like this? Who's the lowest on the ladder? Oh, I can't say any of your staff, can I? Do you want a player? You can, uh, give us a player. Oh, Cooper Harvey. Cooper Harvey. His IQ would still struggle to get this done though, I reckon. Unreal. All right, we think that's as far as Marnie's getting, so All right. we're gonna have to approach her. Your mic's on, Marnie? Hi. Unbelievable. Oh. Hi, everyone. All right, if anyone's got any questions, please raise your hands and uh, if you don't have any questions, make something up because this segment doesn't need to bomb right now. So. Let's, let's uh, get a family member first, maybe. Oh, we got one in the bar. Here we go. What's your name, sir? Josh. Great Hi, Josh. name, fantastic nice name. You. What's your question? Favourite Ben Spate moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I actually have played some footy with Spatey. Um, it was when... I was in the pocket and um, Jacob Edwards went to lay a tackle and kind of lumbered over there um, and missed the tackle and me being quite heated in the moment, I, I sprayed him. I said, mate, it was probably the second game of VFL footy too. We'd just been drafted mid season I was like, mate, what the fuck are you doing? Like, stick the tackle. And, um, yeah, Benny Spate hit me up at um, three-quarter time and said, mate, you just can't, you can't hit up the young fellas like that. You've got to be more encouraging. So um, that's one that's that genuinely stuck with me. <laughs> Ben Spate to get down to the club in a mentor role, you reckon? Oh, he'd be good, Jimmy. He'd be really <laughs> yeah, he'd be good. good. He's flying planes now, I think, for Jet Ultimate, Star or Rex. the first super sub in the league, I believe. Oh, 100%. I Marty, you remember the day. Yeah, we were talking about this the other day. Yeah. Ben Spate, the super sub. Um, that was the start and the end of his career. So, well done, Ben Spate. Love you, Ben. Anyone else? Anyone else? What's your name? Jason. Hi, Jason. Here we go. Uh, I know you've gone back now. I'm just wondering, when you were playing forward, Sean, who would your eyes light up for when they're kicking it to you and who was the worst kick inside 50? Who, when they're kicking it, you go, oh, shit, this isn't going to work? <laughs> Great question. Um, Paul Curtis is the best inside 50 entry kick. Um, his connection to is good. So I think there was one on the weekend where um, Paul took a mark, maybe uh, 50 out, and um, it's just swung onto his left and kicked it straight away and just knew Bull was going to be leading. His connection with the players is unbelievable and he always puts it out into space. Um, oh, I don't think I played any footy with Wardlaw, but like Wardlaw's injury kicks are massive helicopters. So, yeah, they're... Um, <laughs> they he's working on it there, Ryan, please. <laughs> he's working on it. <laughs> Can you just it. have a chat to him? Yeah, no, nah, he's... Um, Wardlaw would be me one at training. he got some helicopters coming in, yeah. <laughs> Wear a helmet for them ones. Next. I need some elevator music to play while we're doing this, don't I? That's all right. If anyone what's wants to, that's all we're doing in post. Some bars from you, John. I'm Laurie. Hi, Laurie. What's your question? This question's for Josh. On oh, wow. Of, on a scale of one to ten, where is your love for Aiden Core sitting at? Well, look, as we all know, uh, I didn't start out the biggest Aiden Core fan in the world. Um, it's rising, I won't, uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, Marnie is definitely uh, converting me on this a little bit. Is my love for Aiden Core rising just so Marnie doesn't roast me on the podcast every week? Absolutely, it's a little bit superficial. Uh, Aiden Core in the last two months of the season, superstar. So if he can do that next year, I'm fully on the Aiden Core train. I reckon if you give me, if you get me halfway through the season and Aiden Core is doing what he did in the last two months, I'm on, I'm on the train. And I'm not going to be that, as nuffy as you though. Yeah, but you know what that means if you get on the train? What does that mean? You're buying me dinner. Oh, that's true. We did say that. Yeah, wow. Well. Can't wait. Was I'll that a planted a question? I'll make a reservation for Rockpool now, hey? If, if, if the next question is about Tristan Jerry, I know this is a setup. All right, anyone else have any questions? Yeah, come on down. Here we go. Feel free to rap chum in the meantime when they're coming down. <laughs> What's your name? Good try, mate. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, mate. Phil? Hi, Phil. Uh, so this is for Chong. So you mentioned you're looking forward to least playing Tom Hawkins. So Tom Hawkins is well known for having a bit of a dive to him. Like, he's got some, some pretty good acting chops. Who do you think, apart from Tom Hawkins, has got the most magnificent dive in the AFL? 
Joel I've seen Kane retired, by the way. Yeah. So this I've is... seen Kane Turner in the wet do that. <laughs> oh yeah, Kane. Don't you? No, no, I, I didn't mind Kane. Kane was okay. Um, yeah, best dive. Where am I? Fuck, you put me on the spot here. Um, I actually have been known to dive. I've never actually been pinged for it. Um, <laughs> I feel any contact in your back, and I'm, I'm the first to flop. Um, <laughs> Mate, honestly, you've got me stumped. I know, you're just killing the season, maybe, maybe Ben Brown, well, if you can get back on the park. Brandy. <laughs> yeah, Brandy. He was just that good. Right? He was at Melbourne, maybe, but not North. He was fine. I'll no, come back. To, I'll come back to this. North. Never played up when he was at North. Never. No, 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 no. I'll um, I'll come back to this one, Phil. That's, that's really stumped me. You've stumped him, mate. Well done. Well done. All right. Any more questions? Anyone else? Surely. Easy, easy questions. Stitch him up. Yeah, come down. Here we go. Okay. What's your name? Nigel. Hi, Nigel. Hi, Nigel. My question is for the group. If you could add one rule to the AFL, normal or ridiculous, what would it be and why? I got it. Unlimited interchange. <laughs> Unlimited interchange. <laughs> Every team has to play David Noble as their coach for a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Beat that. Um, <laughs> I, I actually like the rule um, from the AFLW where if it goes out of bounds uh, in between the 50s, it's uh, you, the opposition gets the ball. I think that would speed the game up a lot. So for a serious answer, that I actually like that. Throw-ins in the Ford 50 and uh, the opposition team gets the ball, whoever sends it out in between the 50s. I'd like to see the sub scrapped and just play five on the bench. Um, it, quicken, it honestly quickened the game up more. Blokes would have... Um, bit more steam as well. Like the sub's great coming on, but honestly, we should just have five on the bench to rotate through. So play was just got a 23. Okay. I think we had one more over here. Anyone? Yeah? Yeah. Do you want to come on down? For what it's worth, mine would be make Hugh Greenwood undroppable. Undroppable. Fucking <laughs> for <laughs> Hi there. Hi. So um, Bailey Scott, every year he just gets better and better and better in pre-season. And this pre-season he's been doing a lot of kick-outs. Kicks the ball 30 or 40 metres, runs on, gets the ball back, kicks it again, and we're going about 80 or 90 metres. Will he be taking kickouts this year? Ooh, this is a bit of an AFL fantasy question, isn't it? There you go. Someone's um, looking for their super coach points. <laughs> uh, not sure. We could have, cause we've got so many good ball users down there at the moment. We um, don't have a designated kickout player. Could be Scotty, could be Sheasel, could be McCurch, it could be Zachy Fisher. We've got that many good ball users down there now, opposed to other years. So, um, yeah, heck, even if I'm down there, I'll take a kick out, but I'll be kicking a short 15 metre pass. So um, I was going to say, sweat on that. how do you feel taking the kick outs? Do you trust yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I actually don't have, any, don't have any issues kicking the field. It's just when it put me in front of goals, I kind of crumble a bit. But <laughs> How many torps are you going to send to uh, to centre field? <laughs> I've been practising them, Josh. Fantastic. That's what I love to hear. I think we've got one more question. All right, what we'll do one more. Name? Ben. Hi, Ben. And, um, for the north closer to a flag, boys. All right, here we go. Anything in store for Ben Mackay this year? <laughs> Anything in store for sorry. Ben Mackay? Can you say that one again? Sorry, what was that? Anything in store for Ben Mackay? Oh, it's tough. I mean, we did the missing posters last time. Um, until we actually see him in game, um, TBA, I guess. We'll probably we'll, we'll cook something up for you, we promise. If there's anything to go by their game yesterday, we better not heckle him too much because he's got enough yeah, issues at the moment. But we'll be going so. for all of Essendon, not just him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, thanks for that one. We'll, uh, we'll love you, the, Ben. We're going to planning sheet. I was a Ben Mackay advocate to stay, so no, we love Ben. We're joking. Uh, all right. That's all good? Great. Thank you guys so much. Thank, Thank you, guys. Nice. Thank you. That was great. So what we're going to do now, um, we're going to get Chom to pick his moment of the season. So the Closer to a Flag boys have... Uh, do you guys see they did a poll or did like a tier list to see who which was the moment of the season? Do you guys see that? Some of you did. Yeah. Um, they're basically going to hold up some photos. I think Marnie's going to have some as well. And we're going to pick moment of the season. We're going to talk about him. And Chom's going to pick his favourite moment of 2023. Yeah. Well, we're going to go for ask a couple of questions, maybe a bit of more context around it. Someone the club Go for it. Might this is your segment. I'm off the mic. Us. But we have a favourite and everyone's favourite. We'll hold this one up. So Clarko holding the ball last season. <laughs> Everyone loves so it. So good. What are the vibes like around the club when this kind of happens? Is it like talked about? Is it on to mentality next week? How do you feel about That one didn't get talked about a lot, but Clarko, as George touched on his press last week, is weirdo. Um, so he's got all these little quirks and um, little mannerisms. And um, 
little words he uses as well. And this is just another one of those things. So it's not that un- unordinary for us, obviously being with him every day, for him to whip something out ridiculous like this. So a weird analogy, a little mannerism in a meeting. So um, that's just everyday life for the big fellow, I reckon. Mm. And uh, bonus points to our other favourite, Charlie Lazaro, for doing that training. Oh, it was the intra-club match, I think he did. Yeah, that was oh, he did too, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. They compared the side-by-side of the, Spot on, of is the, the, of the hole yeah. in the ball. It's so amazing. I'll pass over now for our moment two to check you on. Moment two is massive, by the way. Yeah, so it was massive. Um, so we still legally own Western Australia because we haven't actually lost there in about two years' time. So I just wanted to check um, how off was the lid after the round two performance because us admins, we didn't make it home for the next week. So <laughs> just wanted to see how you, what were the vibes like after round two and we were 2-0 and oh and the vibes were just so high. Well, mate, I personally didn't get near that game and I did not care. That was honestly probably... We did look th- up your stats, actually. Yeah, had a go. <laughs> Shocking. I think I missed one. We actually checked. I'm like, I better check that Tron played in this. I think he had six touches. They were yeah, good so. touches, though. They were. <laughs> so the boys came through for that one. Yeah. Um, honestly, couldn't care less. That was honestly one of the best moments of my life. That and the West Coast game, come off the ground with the best feeling. Um, first wins, I'd obviously never won an AFL game before either. And that, to do it in Perth against... 65,000 female supporters and, and the 1,000 contingent strong over there was unbelievable. Um, and yes, we do own WA, don't we? Yeah, we've watched the replay about <laughs> 20 times. times. Oh, mate, I thought we were going to the granny after that game too. Around, around the, the circles I roll in, uh, Alistair Clarkson was known of them as the mayor of Western Australia for the first six weeks as well. So that was fantastic. Uh, now, this is probably my moment of the season. Uh, it's my Roman Empire as well. When Aiden Kaur broke Jack Higgins' ankles... Um, <laughs> In round 18. So where were you? Tell us what were you feeling? What was going through your head at the time? I had a great view of this. Um, we had a nice box up behind the, um, the goals at that end. And um, Corey's ran out and obviously the game was on the line. I think at this stage we were up by maybe five or six. I think so. It was pretty yeah, close. It was yeah. a really close game. And um, I think just before this, Jackson Archer had taken the chest mark in the pocket. And for some reason that sticks with me. Um, but yeah, Corey ran out of the goal square and had the ball. What was it? Out in the full maybe. Oh, I think it was down the full. I he think it was in the full. Played actually. on, mate. Yeah. My heart was in my mouth. Like, what is this bike doing? Like, oh, five, yeah. like five points up. He's gonna, he's gonna cost the game. They're gonna have a shot. And then, um, yeah, Jack Higgins went flying. Yeah. So almost as good as <laughs> fantastic. Over, almost as good as his overlap handball with Kane Turner. <laughs> <laughs> that is my Roman Empire. Yeah, that was yeah, incredible. Yeah, 100. That's yeah. the best goal of all time. It was. Yeah. yeah. This is what I've learned about podcasting as well, is if I have opinions on players that are slightly negative, as soon as I do something good, the amount of times people sent me that Aiden Core overlapping handball goal was insane. I think I got about 100, that sent to me about 100 times, and I you still, never let I me forget about it. I send it to you. Yeah, you do. No, Please I don't. On. I can't block you because I need to tag you and stuff, Marty. <laughs> it makes it really difficult. So I think I know this is going, but out of the three, which would you pick as your favourite? Um... Yeah, so no brain, the Aiden Core one for now. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, amazing. Let's hope to see more of it this year. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. Let's get a fan one then. What do you guys think was the moment of the season? Aiden Core ankle breaker? Who hands thinks up, that? Hands yes. up, maybe. Not so much. Not so much. A- acquiring no, no, Western yeah. Australia? Yes. yes. All right, there we better. go. What was the other one? Uh, Clarko holding Clarko the ball. Clarko holding the ball. Yeah, okay. Nah, <laughs> we own Western w- Australia. Yeah. We <laughs> own Western Australia. There's a certain member of the audience who will love that. All right. Big Ant's in the crowd, everybody. If you remember from the podcast, say hello to Big Ant. Big Ant. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right, now we're going to really, really test your knowledge. I think we're going to get a couple of you guys to go down for this. Um, we're going to test Chom's knowledge on some, uh, on some North Melbourne players and see if he knows them, all right? I'm going to get these up on my phone once again. Low budget, but here we go. Now, let me know downstairs when you guys have the cards and you're ready to go. Once again. Just taking this. I think I'll be right. I've got Ben Spate. That's got to be fairly... That, look, I'll, I'll tell you what, Ben Spate is deeper than some of these. So we doubted you on the Liam Shields stuff. I reckon you're going to ace these. Dan Nielsen, Dick Watson, <laughs> Tom McKenzie. Watch out. Matt McGuinness. Jeez, he's good. of Alagi. Are we all in position? Almost there. Oh, come on. Here all we right, go. All right, all right. Not those ones, these ones. With admin two. All right. Yeah? No, other ones. Big group of five of them, lads. Yeah. Okay, come on over, admin two. I'm going to show you on my phone, chum, because uh, low budget. All right. All right, so here we go. This is the first one. Liam, hold the player up. Who's this? Now, take your time if you don't know. It's Don Tyson. Don Tyson. <laughs> it's 
got to be Dom. No, it's got to be Dom Tyson. Not the player Wait, in the back. Tyson. Not the player in the oh. background. <laughs> oh, that's too that, that bloke's in 180p, mate. That is Dom Tyson, though. Jeez. I'm telling you. If you're telling me that's Dom Tyson that's blurry, you yeah. better get all five Canterbury, of these. Canterbury top, shoulder tape, and rigid jawline with... That's Laz, obviously, but yeah, yeah Dommy Tyson. All right, all right. Well, we, we just wanted Charles Lazar from that, but he went deeper than we ever <laughs> believed. All right, that's a softball, though. These are going to get incrementally harder, okay? Now, uh, a little bit more old school. A little bit more old school. Who's this? Who's this? That's Clarko. Oh, yeah. I thought we were going to get him on that. No, that's Clarko. I was like, if you don't know your coach, mate, because that kind of looks like Clarko. He looks good there, doesn't he? He does look good. Strapping young lad. That's a bit of a Jai Simkin jawline, do you reckon? Very, very chiseled. Mm. Same hair too. You reckon he can get back to that? You put some uh, Springsteen on the gym, get Clarko on the weights? He has been running a fair bit, but... Um, all right. Yeah, I, I don't know. All right. Age, age gets us all. All right, we get a little bit harder now, okay? That was an easy one. This is the next one here. Oh, fucking know this way. <laughs> No, I do know who this is. Come on, you got it, you got it. Nah, it's on the Tiffany tongue as well. You um, want to throw out any any guesses? Can you, can you give me a hint? Who's that uh, tune, isn't it? What, what, what sort of clue? He, he sort of played took, in the prelim final era. He never took a contested possession ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's going to kill me when you say it because I know who it is. I've seen that lid before. He also like, never missed a game. First, uh, yeah. initials, SG. Shannon Grant. Shannon Grant. <laughs> I'm only joking, that's I'm only that's good. That's good. No, nah, I don't know who that is. <laughs> first name. Do you want to give me his first name? Oh, I've got no idea. Sam. Oh yeah. Um. Nah. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> I'm going to count to three. Everyone's going to yell this name out. One, two, three. Sam Gibson. Sam Gibson. Yeah, Gibbo. Yeah. 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 Easy. <laughs> He's always in around the club. <laughs> Absolutely. Mentor role alongside Ben Spate. All right. Here we go. Who's this? Oh, that's um, fucking Scotty. Oh, sorry. That's Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's Robert Scott. Robert Scott, yeah. absolutely. Well done. Well done. That Last is obscure. One. Last one. Who's this? <laughs> Who's this? Well, should I know him? No, this is, this is the hardest one. Of course you should know who it is. How do you not know, mate? It's like me really? zooming on his head's going to make it. Yeah, that's going to fix it, As a bit of a hint, he's forklift certified as well. <laughs> yeah, Bunnings forklift certified, I oh, believe. Oh, Cam Pedersen. Cam Pedersen, Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, does anyone know that story? I thought that was a bit of an in-house. Oh, the forklift one? Oh, what's the forklift one? The, uh, Cam Pedersen was sort of known around our, uh, us fans as he's forklift certified. That's just what we liked about oh, him. What, okay. what story have you oh, got? I've got a bit of a story for Cam Pedersen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, go. Sean Atley told me this story. Um, and it goes that Pedo kept coming into... That's a shocking nickname. Cam <laughs> kept him. coming into the meetings um, a little bit tired and he kept falling asleep in meetings and... Um, who was the coach at the time? Probably um, Brad Scott. Wasn't it? Yeah, Brad yeah. Scotty. Brad Scott was like, mate, like, why do you keep falling asleep in the meetings? Like, you got bags under your eyes and whatnot. And um, yeah, it turns out the rookie rage was only like eighty six thousand, and Cam had still been working at Bunnies doing night shifts, stacking shelves when he was when he was awesome. playing at the footy club. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he was coming in and falling asleep in the meetings. <laughs> I tell you what, I worked at Bunnings for years and there's a couple of stores that so do. Right. Did you? Which store did you work at? I worked at Sale Bunnings. So I was a paint, paint specialist. Oh, um, I was a paint specialist. We are? Yeah, I was. Mate, we're the manual mixers. Unbelievable. I, got my, I think I've got my name badge in my bag, yeah. actually. I'm gonna, I'll show you after this. Well, I wasn't really This is awful podcasting, guys. Sorry about this. I didn't know we had Good this wages. much. wages. Yeah, not too bad. Did you live and die by the hammer? Um, yeah, I did. And I also, I got in trouble in my second week because I'd just been putting paint and I'd done all the modules and by doing them, I'd click through the videos and just click through each slide and had a guess at the quizzes at the end. And um, a lady come in and she said, oh, I've got to paint this styrofoam mould for my backyard. Um, yeah. What spray paint can I use that um, isn't going to melt it? Oh. Me thinking, oh, like, it's paint. It's not going to melt styrofoam. I said, oh, That's wrong. Use this one, yeah. Paint and, um, expert. Melted her styrofoam. She <laughs> came in and sprayed me. <laughs> Unbelievable. I tell you what, I've been to Sale Bunnings. I worked for Roby for a while and that was one of my stores I used to have to cover. Uh, the bloke in the tool shop had no teeth, so I don't know if he was there when you worked there. Troy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably Tom's, like, second cousin or something. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, I'm from Tassie. Don't make those jokes. It's personal. <laughs> All right. So you're off the hook now, okay? We're going to play a little game with the crowd. And like I said earlier, uh, we've got a uh, Jamie McMillan signed Guernsey to win here. Now, it doesn't get much bigger than that. Basically, what we're going to do, we've got some uh, posters of some players we're going to hold up. Don't yell out any of the names, okay? That's very crucial to the game, otherwise you'll screw it up. We're going to hold up these three players. If you know all three of them, stick your hand up. Marnie's going to pick one of you. If you can name all three, you win the Guernsey, okay? It's that simple. So, 
These are deep cuts as well, and I didn't remember one of these players until uh, we printed out some of these photos. These three players here, I can still show you, Chum, if you like. Just swipe through the next, the next three. Does anyone know these players? Does Stick your hand up. Does anyone not my dad know all three players? Of course you know who they are. We'll give you, yeah, these are deep cuts, Chum. We'll give you some time to think, and we'll give you some clues if not. That's like a mixture of Jackson Archer and Corey Wagner. <laughs> Yeah, guess which one that is, guys. I can see everyone's faces thinking right Come now. On. We've, we've someone, really. Someone surely knows who they all are. Or have a have a whack at it. Surely. I'm back in oh, here. Back corner. Come, come to the front. Here we go. Give them a round of applause, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Hello. What's your name? Campbell. Campbell. Nice to meet you, Campbell. Okay. Who is this player over here? Alan Obbs. Correct. We well done. There we go. Well done. Well done. Who is this player over here? Milky Warren. Oh. Yeah. Last finally, one. Finally. Pagan. No uh, idea. I'll give I'll give you a clue. Okay. The name is similar to the last one. Warren Benjamin. There you go. Correct. There you go. There you go. Well yeah. done. Unbelievable. That's so impressive. In, that's Incredible. so good. That's amazing. It's probably one of the best oh. nuff performances I've ever yeah. seen. Oh. 100%. It lives yeah. in my head rent free that we had a Benjamin Warren and a Warren Benjamin on the list at the <laughs> yeah. same time. It doesn't get much better than that. Yeah. John, what was your favourite Alan Obst moment of, uh, of his career? When he kicked that goal from 40 on the run. Yeah, I remember that yeah. one. <laughs> Alan running. Obst was the most deep cut player. Did anyone else play AFL Live like 2007 or something? He was my favourite player on that. And I don't know what I was doing at that age. Clearly, I had no clue. Imagine but him being called by Dennis Cometti. The ball goes to Ox. <laughs> well, I've got Warren Benjamin's number one fan down here. Okay, here we go. I've actually got his sign jumper. Wow. Argentinian <laughs> one. Is it hanging up in the, in the pool room? It's in, no, it's not. It's in my cupboard, but I'll get money. Oh, that is going to the wall. You can see where I get the nuffiness from, can't you? <laughs> no pressure, Sean, but we hope you're never on one of these lists, mate, all right? <laughs> All right, that's basically it. Uh, we're going to do it now. I should look at my run sheet. Everyone come back up, I think, unless anyone else wants to, like, yell at Marnie or ask any questions or do anything. But if not, we're going to slowly Please feed... do that. Well, yeah, respectfully. After the show. After the show. After the show. All right, let's slowly feed this mic back up here and uh, hopefully no one gets knocked out by the mic. Unbelievable stuff. That's high take. What was your favourite Alan Lobbs moment? Uh, he's one of the players of all time, I'm not sure. <laughs> Does anyone know, did Warren Benjamin get a game? No? No games? Okay. Oh, he's up there with North legend Tom Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did actually come across a video a few days ago of um, Brent Harvey in 2009, I think, interviewing Alan Opst. And I've never seen a man, like, stare down the barrel of a camera and look so scared his entire life. <laughs> did anyone else know Alan Opst went into male modelling after his career? Because that was baffling to me. But then I looked back at it, he's handsome. He's handsome. All right. He's no Hugh Greenwood, though. He's no... Who's better looking, Hugh Greenwood or uh, Jasper Pittard, Marnie? This Hugh is... Greenwood. Oh, why? Why are you so confident? He's handsome, don't get me wrong. Hugh Greenwood is the best. Can I just say one thing? He was going to come today and... Where is he? Uh, he had a session this morning on his ankle. But uh, could hopefully he's all good for round one. That's the priority, obviously. Do you know that, John? I was in at the club this morning. I don't recall seeing him, actually. Wow. Well. Oh, oh. oh. She's been stood up. Stood up. I'll be having a word to him after <laughs> this. He won't be having a word back. <laughs> all right. We've got a couple more little segments, guys, and then we're going to end it, all right? So... This is a very, very important one to me, okay? There's a man in the crowd sitting down in the back corner and his name's Griffin. Now, I haven't told Griffin about this. This is going to be very exciting. I can see his face right now. Griffin, stick your hand up. Everyone look at Griff. Give him a round of Hi, applause. Griffin. Hey, Griff. So, Sean, we chatted about this a little bit before, but uh, Griffin is a North Melbourne fan, but over the last few years has jumped off the bandwagon. Now, uh, at work, I've been trying to get him back on board and I haven't been able to do it just yet. So who better to do it than Charlie Common right now? Chom? Can you convince this man down the back to jump on the North train right now? Because if we win a premiership soon, Griff, and you haven't jumped on by now, you can't say you're one of us, mate. Griff, first of all, mate, that's really disappointing. Um, 
I feel like uh, I feel like being a North Melbourne player is similar to being a North Melbourne supporter. And um, last four years, obviously, I got drafted in 2019, and that's pretty much when we went to shit. Um, had <laughs> no coincidence, th- though, right? No, none at all. Nothing to do with me. I'm shining light. We've had four <laughs> or five drink coaches: Nobes, Patch, um, who else? Clarko, Ray Shaw. Ratton, um, David Noble. Nobes, he was a favourite of mine. Um, yeah, same. Had a, had a lot of different <laughs> coaches, and um, I feel like the tough times that we've been through is just going to make what we're come, what we're building towards the next year, two years, three years, so much more special. Um, so I don't know why you wouldn't want to be a part of that, mate. <laughs> Griff, are you back, mate? Yell at us. He's back. Unbelievable. Yes. Hold on, Griff. That was hard. <laughs> Look, you're doing God's work, mate. You're doing God's work. There's one more man down the back, Big Ant. Did you guys listen to the podcast with Big Ant on it when we were arguing about West Coast and North? Big Ant. Hi, Big Ant. Give a round of applause. Give us a wave. Give us a wave. Another wave. Well done on tickets, Oh, man. he's shy. All I want from you now, Big Ant, we had a bet last year that uh, I said that Nick Larky <clears throat> was going to kick more goals than Oscar Allen. Now, that was met with disdain. I did say who's Oscar Allen, and I did mean every word of that. Um, it was looking pretty shaky halfway through the year. It was very, very close, but as we know... Larky, All-Australian, fantastic superstar, full forward, took it out. Is the bet back on, mate? Yeah, it'll be back on. The bet's back on, all right. What's at stake? <laughs> I, I laid down my terms. Mm. You just have to take me up Anyone got any, uh, any ideas what we could bet for this? Anyone got any ideas? Because he's told me, get a tattoo. He's covered in them, I've got none, so I feel like that's not very fair. Shave your head. Shave my head. Yes. What would be so bad about no, that, yeah, Josh? True. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Luckily, I'm adopted. That's not going to come naturally. <laughs> I like the membership. I really like the membership. Okay, how about this? If uh, if Larky wins, you got to get a North membership. If uh, Al- if what's his name? Oscar Allen. <laughs> oh, sorry, Oscar Allen. If Oscar Allen wins, I'll get the cheapest West Coast membership humanly possible. You can have the cheapest one too. There's no such thing as a cheap West Coast membership. You'll probably be forking out a grand. It comes with a reversible Frio membership, remember? <laughs> All right, done. Absolutely, it's on. I've got to start saving my applause. coins. Oh. Does West Coast's membership come with free KO? Oh, damn it. All right. Well, basically, guys, that's about it. Um, do you guys want to talk about Bay 29 or something really quickly to promote it to yeah. everybody? Bay 29 will be back this year. We'll, uh, we'll release more, hopefully, but most home games you can see us there. And uh, Admin 3, to my right here, is going to need a lot of streps because we're kicking a lot of goals this year. Mm, absolutely. And remember, Chom's going to come and kanga kanga with us in the base. You don't want to be able to miss out For on that. For every win. <laughs> <laughs> Every single win, absolutely. Because <laughs> there's going to be heaps of them. Marnie, have you got anything to promote? Advertise, you want to talk about Hugh a bit more? Anything? <laughs> uh, I mean, the only thing that I have left to say is that hopefully you guys enjoy having me on the podcast because this year I will be joining Josh as the co-host of the true. show. True, no, very, very true. Yeah. We so needed to get... More, uh, a lot more Hugh Greenwood and Aiden Court chat to come. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as we all, me and Marnie are full time now, as we know. So, um, no, Marnie's going to be doing it every single week with me now. We needed more talent on board, and everyone seems to like it a bit more when Marnie's on. We argue a lot, and uh, yeah, everyone loves Hugh Greenwood chat. So, just like the old married couple that we are. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to fight, argue, throw things, but hey, that's good content, right? Anything you're plugging, Chom, except for Chom Flicks? Yeah, follow Chom Flicks, but I'd just like to say. Um Thanks so much for having me on. Um, no worries, man. And thanks for putting out so much good content for our fans to enjoy as well. Like, you do a great job um, promoting our footy club. Um, helps us play as well. Like you're getting new members, it supports the club financially as well. So I think you don't realise how much it really does help us. Um, and everyone that come as well, thanks so much for supporting us, especially over the last four years, as I touched on. Like, obviously, it hasn't been the most enjoyable, um, but that is going to turn and we're making sure of that. So thanks, guys. Unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you very much. So just to finish on, a little bit of the same. Thank you to all you guys for coming along. I, I started this podcast about a year ago, just in my bedroom, talking about my footy club, and I can't believe that like, this many people are listening to it. Uh, 
Thank you so much for wanting to spend a little bit of your money, your time to come down and listen to the live show today. So thank you very much. Give yourselves a round of applause because it means a lot to me. I really thought no one ever wanted to listen to me ramble on about the footy club, but here we are. Um, thank you to Anthony and everyone at Bonehead as well. Please grab as many drinks as you can. It's delicious stuff. Um, give them a clap as well for giving us the venue as well. And just uh, a round of applause for your host today, Josh. You I'll stop. No, stop it, Marty. You're embarrassing me. And you keep us sane, weekly therapy, so looking forward to what's to come this year. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, thank you to these guys as well for coming on, all the Close to a Flag admins. If you're not on their page, all, obviously you guys are, but give them a clap. They do fantastic stuff. Thank you. Thanks so much. So many thank yous as well. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of people to thank, mate. And once again, thank you so much for listening to it. Hopefully it grows. I'm going to be in Bay 29 as much as I can and we can all hang out with you guys. So thank you so much for listening. Um, basically, we're going to come down and hang with you guys now. We'll grab a drink, come and say hello, grab a photo, whatever you guys want. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the, uh, rest of the afternoon. I'm going to try and find that uh, North Melbourne remix of the, uh, the club bangers to put back on for everybody. But um, yeah, I think that's just about it, guys. Once again, one more round of applause for everybody here. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, Cue it up, Josh. Cue it up. Cue it up, yeah. I'm just going to find it here. I've got to just make sure I'm connected to the house thing, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, thank you very much, guys. Thanks and uh, we're going to come and hang with you guys. So thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you for coming. North Bowl is real. <laughs> <laughs>